Hey guys, thanks for joining me. Another episode of Mind Muscle Meditation. So today I'm gonna to be showing you my shred shed. This is something that I'm super excited about. Basically what happened was when COVID hit, um, all of the gyms in California shut down in my area. And I told my buddy, I said, if the gym shut down again, I am gonna go out and buy all my own weights and build a workout area. And so I didn't know how I was gonna do it. I looked online on Google Images and Pinterest and I found some really good ideas. And so that's exactly what I'm gonna show you today. My vision for my workout area uh, that came to life and I call it the Shred Shed. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera around and get right to it. Okay, so here we go. Patio by night, Shred Shed by day. So this is my patio that I work out on. It's about 500 square feet approximately. And here we go. So I'm gonna turn the camera around a little bit so you guys can get a better angle, but this is the shred shed. And as you can see, I have a few other pieces of uh, exercise equipment. Um, right over here are my core fitness dumbbells. Found these on Craigslist and they were a little bit more expensive than um, buying them brand new, but they're all sold out because of the quarantine. So I was lucky to find these things just to show you guys real quick. So this is uh, 10 pounds. And as you can see, you can pull it up like that. And then we can go all the way to 50 pounds and literally have 50 pounds right there. And then right back down to five pounds. So it's super easy to switch and these are significantly better than the old school ones, which I have right here. Um, just took a lot of time to um, change the weight back and forth. And now with these, I can just superset. So over here is going to be my cardio machine. This is a street strider. As you can see, this one is the base model 3i. Um, I have it set up for in place cardio as you can see it comes with this little thing you can go on their website and pick one up um, i found this on facebook marketplace for about half price so that was a really good deal and uh it doesn't it's not very good on the hills um so i would definitely go up to the seven or eight i next time but uh this one's great for steady state cardio and during the um, morning i just have a beautiful view of the moon um, so yeah, it's really nice to get that cardio going. I bring a mirror out so I can check my form. Over here are my original dumbbells, which now, since I have the uh, core fitness that stays at 50 pounds, these guys are going to be 60 to 80 pounds, which I can fit on. Uh, I can fit 80 pounds on here. Um, I'm going to buy longer handles so that I can go up to a hundred pounds, uh, for incline press and uh, flat dumbbell press when I get to that point, but I'm not there yet. So uh, this is the shred shed. So these mats here you can find on Amazon. I got a set of six for about 20 bucks. Uh, this bench I have been super happy with. Uh, this I found on Amazon shipped to me with Prime was only 180 bucks. Um, one thing that I regret is I do wish that I went with the um, leg extension and leg curl attachment. Uh, that is a regret. So next time around, I'll definitely do that. But one thing, the one reason I went with this bench is because it was a great value, but also because it can go um, 90 degrees, as you can see. So really good for military press and all kinds of other exercises. And it can also go into the decline position which is really handy for all kinds of stuff. Um, it does come with this attachment right here. As you can see, I just tend to take it off because I don't really use it, uh, but I, I do use it on some things. And then it just fits nicely right on that hook in my shed. So let me go ahead and spin the camera. Let's see, I'll back it up so you guys can get a full view of the shred shed. So, okay, so here it is. Now, this is a um, Olympic barbell. I found my barbell set on Craigslist. Um, the weights had a little bit of rust on them, but I didn't really care because I knew it was gonna be working out outside. And guys, if you get a decent price on the 
uh, Olympic weights, they hold their value. So you can always sell them if you want to get your money out of them. So what I did here to hold this bar, you can see I have a couple of carriage bolts. And then I just cut this little piece right here so it kind of slides in a little bit more. Um, then I just sanded this edge a little bit so it kind of slides over. Now on the back, it has wing nuts. And uh, what I want to do is actually cut these down a little bit so it reduces the time. Uh, to change it and move it up and down. But as you can see, I have holes so I can literally bring this bar all the way up and actually make this into a pull-up bar or anything in between. It's great for squats, bent over rows, flat bench, incline bench, all kinds of stuff. And then at Walmart or hardware store, you can buy these little hooks, which are absolutely great. And those will hold all of your attachments. And as you can see, I just went on Amazon and I bought a bunch of attachments. So I pretty much have everything ready to go. Um, over here, uh, this I won in a contest. It's a JBL Flip Bluetooth speaker. It's incredible. It sounds great in the shed. It really gives that echo and it's got a great bass. So funny story, I had a band for a long time. Uh, it's a Gold's Gym band, and my buddy and I were working out, and it broke on him. So I knew I was going to use the attachments, and I finally figured out a good idea. My meditation has been helping me be super creative. So this can actually hold his body weight. He weighs 187 pounds, and all it is is some screws and washers. So um, the next thing is, the very important, is this right here which is my contraption for lap pull down, uh, tricep extensions. Um, we do rope uh, face pulls for rear delts, all kinds of stuff, hence the attachments. And so what you do is you just go on, uh, you go to Home Depot and you can buy this flange right here. Um, you can buy the top and you just drill a hole in it. And actually it's really easy to drill with a titanium drill bit. Um, and then what I did, let me go ahead and show you guys i'll try to set the camera down so okay so just two carabiners one at the top one at the bottom and so what i do is i just hook it right there so as you can see it's not even if it has the attachment on it's not going to fall down and hit me in the head so i just hook it right there and then for this one right here um let's see if i can do this so you guys can see so all i do is i take this off right here and as you can see it's just bolted in with a couple of washers and lock nuts and there i have it i can hook everything right here now we've had a couple hundred pounds on here so um it's it definitely will hold its weight i've had no problems what i did do is i just marked it right here so i can make sure that this bottom part wasn't spinning on me and didn't fall but honestly i can't even uh, take this off by hand so I don't think I'm gonna have any problem with that and you can put it on really tight with a pipe wrench so the next part of the shred shed is where I store the Olympic weights which will go on here by the way and don't buy a two inch one of these you go one inch, uh, inch and three quarter I believe so you can fit two inch Olympic plates on I went with two inch the first time I had to return it and get another one so this is the platform that I built and you'll see that um, I had a little bit of a dilemma, which worked out to be a benefit. I actually have a garden hose right there, and I wanted to make sure that I had use of it still. So all you have to do is open the shred shed, and then I notch this out so I can still turn the water on. And then I just ran the water uh, line over here and out the side so that we can still water our plants. Now here's where we store the Olympic plates, and as you can see, um, I have the 45, 35, 25, and 10 on each side, and they are held on by these guys, which are basically the same principle. So I went to Home Depot, bought some pipe. This one, I drilled a hole and sent it through. This one, I screwed in with um, screws and washers, and uh, it's one inch pipe. Um, one thing that's nice is the one inch pipe is really tight, but if you go a little bit uh, less, like a seven eighths or a three quarter, it might be easier to get it, these things off. And if you put them in on an angle, that might work too. So those are just pipes and pipe flanges that I bought at Home Depot. 
So as you can see, I have this here, which will support the weight um, of the, uh, the weight from the cable system. And then the plywood just goes on over it. And that is not attached with any uh, screws. It's just simply, you know, two uh, pieces of two by four and plywood. And all I did was I just screwed it on right there. And that's how it stays together. So it's easy. I'm doing this with one hand, and then I just um, I just throw it in like this, and there I have it. Then I have my easy bar ready to go. I have my clips, which I absolutely love. Highly recommend these things. Bought them on uh, Amazon. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So here we have where the mats sit. So when I put everything away. Uh, it actually all closes up now one thing that's very important is I wanted to Have my doors so that they close and they swing open all the way So you'll notice that I have a little bit of trial and error here So my door does not go all the way back and the reason why I had to build that way is because I had to put it under the gutter so that um, I wouldn't get any water in it and it would shed the water pretty well but if i had a little bit of a roof or something i probably would have made this uh two um two and a half feet wide by four feet um because i would i would really like these doors to go flat all the way the way that i uh took care of the problem is i just bought these things and i just tightened them really tight and so i know for my shed i just need about an inch here and that way the plates won't hit the door. But, you know, like I said, if you build yours a little bit uh, uh, deeper, you're not gonna have that problem. And the one thing that I did wanna show you is, so these are the hinges that I used. And in order to accomplish it folding all the way back, I actually put this hinge, as you can see, about an inch and a half over, which would give clearance for this right here. That's really important. And of course you can buy these hinges at any hardware store. So the next thing that I'm gonna show you is the way I set up my dip machine, which by the way, I made fold and it's right over here. So I'm gonna set it up. All right guys, so we're back. So now this is four different things I wanna show you here. So here we have the dip and leg raise setup, which as you can see, it just bolts right to the squat rack. And what I did is I just have one screw here, so that allows it to pivot. And then I just block the feet with the weight. Now, I have a bolt here, which if you really wanna have an extra protective measure, you can put a wing nut on that side, just, just like this guy right here uh, for the squat bar but um, I found that it's not necessary. So what I did was I moved up the bar so that you could see the barbell in squat position. I also changed um, my, my grip to a lat pull down. Now this is actually a lat pull down machine that I bought, um, for, uh, excuse me, uh, these are actually built out of two bicycle handlebars that I bought from a very nice gentleman on Facebook Marketplace. He gave me a great deal, and now we're friends on Facebook. So uh, that was really fun experience. Um, and then I just bought this bar, and I actually just drilled it. So what I did was I just drilled the bar. I put a couple of um, lock nuts and put the screws through. And then as you can see, I did the same technique that I used right here. And um, instead of spending $100 for a pull-up bar, I did this one, I built this one for about 20 bucks. And uh, the handlebars just work really, really good. It's got all kinds of different grips, you know, overhand, um, underhand. You can spin the bar uh, around 180 degrees and then you have like a whole new range of motion. So this was a really, really fun project. I'm super excited not only to spend the mo uh, save the money, but have something that, um, that I built. So I have the pride in that. But honestly, I feel like it gives me a great pump and it really just activates the muscles. So the next thing that I wanted to show you is this guy right here. This is where I hang my belt. 
And then what I did was I put a four by four down here. So I use my weighted dip belt um, and I tie it around my waist when I do calves. And I found that to be really effective. This is, uh, this is a four by four. So you have two by four, two by four, four by four. And I just screwed it in right there. And that gives me a, a really deep stretch, great range of motion with the calves. And what I do is I, I have my hands on here and here so that um, I can stabilize myself when I do the calf raises. And I've also found that sometimes I like to put my hands here and that way I can stabilize and just work a little bit differently. So now what I wanna show you guys is all my lifting equipment, which is right over here. The only thing that's not here is my weight belt, which I found on Amazon. Uh, for 25 bucks, it works really good. Um, I've got my towel, which I put on my bench. Uh, I use these right here. Uh, those are my wrist wraps. They strengthen your wrists for skull crushers and other exercises. These guys, those are my lifting straps. I've got my knee wraps and compression sleeves for my knee wraps. These are really great. The, the brand is Ray-Band. You can get those on Amazon as well. Um, my Gold's Gym jump rope, I've got some gloves for when it gets cold. And then these are the fat grips. These are awesome. Uh, Jay Cutler swears by these. He turned me on to them and I have had a lot of fun using them. Great activation for your forearms and your grip strength. So I like to have everything laid out. Uh, that way it's easy access. Another thing that I wanna show you guys is just a real quick tip. When you're stacking your Olympic plates, what I've found to get my fingers, uh, to be able to get my fingers under here really easy without hurting them, is I just throw a two and a half under there or a five pounder. And I have those on this guy right ready to go here. And then I also have it there. So yeah, just go ahead and throw a two and a half under there whether you're using 45, 10, 25, 35, it doesn't matter. Just stack two and a half, then a 35, two and a half, then a 45, and it'll be, it'll make your life a lot easier for loading and unloading. And you can get a longer pipe if you, um, you know, are really strong and you're stacking like uh, four or five um, different uh, uh, 45 pound plates. So you got a lot of weight on there. Um, this guy I bought at the hardware store and I think it's rated for 400 pounds, uh, 480 pounds. And um, I've had a little bit of trouble with my band. So just so you're aware, these bands will wear out. But one little trick I did was I put a washer in between here and the pulley rides so much smoother. And you can actually just change it out with this little um, cotter pin right there. Um, it's super simple. And so let me show you guys how I attach this one to the header. Okay, here we are deep in the shred shed. And what I did was I took a um, half inch drill bit and I drilled up through the header and then I just bolted it to it. Simple as that. So as you can see here, this is how I stack my weights so that we're ready to put them on the bar and load and unload. And what I'm gonna show you guys next is how I do my calf raises and my weighted dips with my dip belt. All right guys, so you might wanna zoom in and check this out, but this is my dip belt. So what I do is I put um, one carabiner here and then I latch it onto the chain, the, the fourth link, another carabiner here and uh, then I have this one without anything. So then what I do is I put this around me and I latch it with the first carabiner, just like this, okay? So next, what I do is I take, now these are 45 pound plates. I found that the 45 pounders um, were really good for calf raises. You might have to do a lot of reps, but if you're getting a full range of motion, then that's fine. So what I do is I kneel down and I take the chain and then I put it through like this. So I'm gonna show you with 90 pounds what it looks like. Now, what I found is as these weights are hanging uh, between your legs, they, they can bump a little bit. The two and a halfs, or excuse me, the 45s work really good. 
uh, two of them. I have used three and that is about as the most that you can do without being terribly uncomfortable. So you can adjust this top one to your liking based on the size of your waist. And of course the length of the chain can be adjusted for uh, what is necessary for your size. So then all you do is you hold it together with your knees like this. And remember, this is 90 pounds, real steel, okay? Make sure that they're nice and tight so that they don't pinch anything. Hold them with your legs, slide the other uh, chain through, and then just simply hook it on the carabiner and stand up carefully. And there you go. I have 90 pounds hanging on my legs and I'm gonna show you the dips and the calf raises next. Oh, and by the way, this is how you unload, same, same thing. Um, but one very important point that I want to show you, and I actually do need a new carabiner because this one is not ideal for the setup. Um, but, so my buddy and I work out together and we wanna have a quick release. So all you do is you set it up in a way so that it looks like this. And then he comes over, grabs the weight, slides it around himself, and then latches it just like so, and you're ready to go. Okay, on to dips and calf raises. So one little trick that I found that was really helpful is uh, what I do to make sure that this chain um, doesn't hit me in the head. I just simply loop it up like that. So I, I attach it to the carabiner right here and it still is going through the pulley. I have it here and then I just have it behind this piece of wood and that way when I'm doing squats, it will be out of my way. Okay, so here is the shred shed about ready to close. Everything is put away. As you can see, I have all my weight stacked under there along with the pin. And then over here, I can easily fit my larger dumbbells, my towel, my core fitness dumbbells right inside. And again, I wish I went a little bit deeper because as you can see, there's just a little bit of a gap kicks the door out just slightly, not a big deal. Um, and then I have a seven foot Olympic bar up here. I have a shelf built where a little um, hanger uh, keeps my mats intact. I have another hanger right up there which holds my bench. And as you can see, everything just fits perfectly. And there are my weight belts right here hanging ready to go for next time. Okay, so let's close the doors. Okay, here's here's the shred shed all locked up. Um, as you can see, I have the little latch there. Um, I put these guys here to attach the other side of the hinge because this is literally quarter inch plywood right there. Um, and as you can see, like there's some touch up that I could do, like paint that a little bit. I could have used higher quality trim. Um, and then I have my shovels and everything just hanging on the side. And then over here, you can really get a good profile of it. And you can see it takes up barely any room. And this whole entire structure is only attached to the rafters uh, with four screws on each side, which I could easily putty and uh, just paint over if I ever wanted to take this down or if I ever move. Um, on my patio, it's actually just held by the weight of all of the um, the plates because there's always weight uh, distributed on the structure so it never moves. Um, the best thing to do would be to probably uh, adhere it and anchor it somehow, but I didn't want to drill into the patio. So there it is, the shred shed. Thanks for joining me today, guys, on the full tour of the shred shed. 
If you like the content, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.